So my name is Edward Molitor. I'm the head of international public affairs and sustainability in the port of Gothenburg. We had a presentation on green corridors in the port of Gothenburg. We were early on in answering to the Clyde Bank Declaration, which asked port authorities and shipping companies to create green corridors. We've created two green corridors, one to North Sea ports and Seebrugge in Belgium, and one corridor to Rotterdam. And both our corridors, we have done a lot of work with everything around the actual fuel switch on the vessels. But that still remains to be done because it's very difficult to get a business case working due to the fact that the price gap between conventional fuels and the new alternative fuels is still too large. They're, they're, well, there's they're traffic theory. on these corridors and this traffic is already connected to onshore power supply for instance, but the actual fuel switch on the vessels remains to be done. In the one uh, corridor, we're aiming to switch from LNG, natural gas, to biogas, LBG. And on the other corridor, we're aiming for new vessels running on ammonia, which is a lot more difficult, so we need new vessels, new technology. They will cost a lot of money, definitely. But for the CAPEX cost for these new vessels, there has been an application made to the European Union. So we hope to get funding from the European Union for that. The problem is that the OPEX cost of the fuel is still going to be an issue because the price gap of the fuel is still there. What we realized along the way is that we were hoping for incentives of some kind, economic or others, from the states that uh, signed the Clyde Bank Declaration. But we do not see any actual examples of this yet. Therefore, we're hoping for the regulation to come, because when the regulations come from the European Union on Fuel EU, AFIR, and Emission Trading Scheme, that will push the price gap to become smaller and smaller. And we also hope that internationally we'll get the same thing from the International Maritime Organization. Unfortunately, that takes a little bit longer, so we're probably not going to see anything before 2030, but right. perhaps towards the middle of that decade, 2035 perhaps. This platform is important because we share the information and we discuss what is possible or not. And the main part of the lobbying that we do towards the European Union and IMO is about telling what is possible or not. For instance, when it comes to onshore power supply, it was about saying that it is possible. We've shown in pilot cases that this can be done and therefore it can be regulated. It definitely seems to be working, doesn't it? it although it's slow, but... It I mean... is slow, but it has to be slow because I think the more global a regulation is, the longer it needs to take to get it in place. When you rush the regulations to get them faster implemented, it's not necessarily the better case. We've That's seen that with CII, for instance. It did not turn out well because we rushed it too much. That's a very good point.